Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about how to play Atari 8-bit cassette games on your PC using the original cassettes, which is pretty cool in my opinion. As an example of an Atari 8-bit cassette game, I have here Jawbreaker, which is an early release by Online Systems, which eventually became the famous company Sierra Online. You can see here on the top right it says that it's, it would cost first of all $29.95 and it requires an Atari 400 or 800. It's a cassette in 100% machine language. We got a cool picture of uh, a guy, a mouth, getting his mouth broken by words. And the toothpaste tells us that it's by John Harris, who, if you read the uh, book Hackers by Stephen Levy, which talks about a lot of the early history of Sierra, they mentioned that John Harris was a, a whiz kid hacker who was able to make this amazing code and Apparently this, this uh, game really taxed the abilities of the Atari 8-bit in the early days before it was well documented. So what is the game? Well, it's basically a Pac-Man clone. You can see from the picture here, you can see sort of a maze. That's not exactly what it looks like, and it's, it's actually more detailed in color than that. But it says here, this arcade game takes you to the candy store for a wild game of tag with some of the rowdiest playmates you'll find anywhere. If you can eat all the sweets, the bratty kids will stop bothering you. And after a quick stop and br a brushing of the teeth, it's off to the store for another day of sweets and tag. By far the most extensive usage of Atari graphics to date. So basically, they've, instead of ghosts, they're saying they're kids at the candy store. You're a set of teeth instead of Pac-Man. And there's a nice gimmick where it actually shows the teeth getting brushed at the end of the level. But basically, it's a Pac-Man clone. This, this folder came shrink-wrapped like this. This is the, the, the cassette version. You can tell because the edge is thick. It had to hold the cassette. The disc version is a lot flatter. It doesn't have this extra edge on the side here. But basically, it was shrink-wrapped either way. If you open it up, you get the cassette tape, which probably came in an actual, an actual cassette case, but my copy doesn't have it for whatever reason. You can see it says copyright 1981 online systems. And then we have a nice cool manual here, which uh, first of all has instructions of how to load the game, load the cassette and the recorder, power up the system, after the signal, press return key, etc. And then there's a cool uh, sort of visual description of how to play the game. Like your player is, and then it shows a picture of the teeth as opposed to saying you're a pair of teeth. And the whole thing is basically like that. There's some scoring at the end. So the... I guess the problem with cassette games back in the day was that they were slow to load. You had to wait for the tape to load. But the advantage of them now is that since the, the cassette is just an audio file, it's very easy actually to load it onto your PC and be able to play in an emulator. So in order to do that, you don't need too much. Basically, you need a tape deck uh, or some kind of cassette recorder. This is a sort of a fancier one. It's not very fancy, but fancier with a CD player or whatnot, but basically I just need something that can read tapes. That's the first thing I need, and I can put the, pop the tape in here. The second thing I need is a dubbing cable, which you can buy, I would say, a Radio Shack, if you can find a Radio Shack these days, or you can buy it at Amazon. But basically, it's, it's like a headphone cable, just with two ends that are the same, and the idea is you plug one of them into the headphone jack of your player here, and the other one would go into the input jack of your computer, your sound card, in my case, there was one more thing I had to acquire, which is this cable up here. And the reason for that is that the laptop I was using to, to, to record the audio in doesn't have really a line-in jack or a microphone jack. It has a combination headset jack. And this is an adapter that lets you plug basically the line-in into the, uh, the microphone jack here. And this end plugs into the laptop. And obviously there's, there's some more things you might need to do, like I had to set my, my laptop to turn off the integrated mic, and that took some fiddling to turn off the integrated mic and still allow an external mic that wasn't a USB. But basically this is a line-in that, that we can read in directly off the tape player, close this here and, and plug it in, turn it on, and play the tape. And then you can use a program like Audacity just to record the audio off of the tape directly. Unfortunately, there's no emulator for Atari 8-bit that allows you to just play it directly in the emulator without recording the audio first. That does exist for some other computers, but not for Atari 8-bit as far as I've seen. But again, you can use Audacity just to record the audio as a WAV file, and then you can load it into your emulator very easily. So let's, let's, let's sort of see how that looks.
So here I have Audacity running. And as you can see, I've already loaded the tape into Audacity, which is just as simple as hitting record, sorry, hitting play on the tape and hitting record in Audacity. And it just loads it in. I was surprised to see that the whole tape is only four minutes long, but I guess if it was any longer than that, people back in the day would have been pretty annoyed about it. So I don't know if you ever listened to one of these tapes. So let's press play and hear what it actually listens, what it sounds like. Basically, it's a lot of noise. It's not uh, very uh, pleasant to listen to. This is only sort of the, the preamble here. You can see by looking at the at the wave image, it starts to get to the actual uh, content, and it becomes much louder and, I guess, more annoying. That's, so that's, what, that's what a data tape sounds like, basically. But you can zoom in, as I'm doing here, and you can start to see where the actual data is on the image. It looks like a bunch of blocks when you're far away. As you get closer and closer, you can see that really these are these are little peaks and valleys that represent the zeros and ones in, in the analog signal. So it's pretty cool if you haven't seen this before. But anyway, let's get to the actual uh, emulator and see how to load this thing in. So if you set up the emulator correctly and have all the ROMs in the right place, this is what you'll see. If you don't have the ROMs that you have to download separately from the internet, you'll just get an error message. But if you do it right, this is the Atari 800XL self-test, which I remember from my youth. And you can uh, get out of that uh, by hitting F1, which goes to this menu here. The first time you run this, there's a couple things you need to set up for this to work properly. One is go to System Settings, and then you have to change the video system from PAL, which is the default, to NTSC, which is the type of television that we use in North America, and that's where the games were, were produced. So you have to have the right video signal, otherwise you'll get black and white. Then you go back and go to display settings and you make sure the video artifacts is set to full NTSC filter and that basically says that the emulator should try to emulate an old style NTSC TV as closely as possible including all the artifacts or imperfections of the signal which uh, which, took, which, had, which the old TVs had. And the reason for this is that the games are actually programmed to take advantage of these imperfections of the signal to do better uh, type of uh, graphics and things like that than they'd be able to do otherwise. So really cool programming tricks that you have there. And then uh, if we go back out, now we can go out to the Run Atari program and we can just directly select the Jawbreaker WAV file. Because this is a patched version of the emulator, you don't need to use cassette images or anything like that. Just load the direct WAV file, which is pretty cool. After that cool rendition of the Candyman song from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the game starts up, and as you can see, uh, you're the yellow uh, teeth, not Pac-Man, but teeth, I mean, I had to make it yellow to rip it off even further, chasing these kids, or oh, being chased by the kids, and then chasing the kids around the maze. Uh, just like in the Pac-Man game, there's the, the, the ghosts or the kids in different colors, and then when you eat the, the energy pellets, they turn into, uh, they turn blue, basically. And then you can chop them as well. And you get the same type of scoring, 200, 400, 600, 800. So basically the same as Pac-Man. I think the game is a little bit harder than Pac-Man because the it moves pretty fast. And there's a bunch of blind spots where you just, you just can't get away from the ghost. Like when you go around these long corners here. Um, it's, it's somewhat difficult in my opinion. But it's a fun game and it's pretty cool. In terms of the colors, you, know, you have those, those energy pellets with the cool color swirls. The ghosts, if you notice, they all rotate sort of differently. You can't see it right now, but the red one basically just sort of goes straight through the maze. The other four all rotate on different axes. See in a second. So here you see the cool animation at the end of the level where a toothbrush comes out and brushes the teeth. That's a nice addition they didn't have to put in, but it's pretty cool. And the second level starts up. So here you'll see what I mean about the ghost rotating in different ways. The blue guy sort of turns on a horizontal axis. The uh, orange guy rotates around like, I don't even know what the axis is, the z-axis maybe. And the pink guy flips up and, up and down on a y-axis. So it's pretty cool. They all have different animations. And just overall, it's, it's, a, it's a fun little game. Not a huge amount of depth to it, but back in the day, I'm sure it was a lot of fun for people that played it on their Atari 8-bit computers. But anyway, that's Jawbreaker, and that's how to uh, get killed in Jawbreaker and <laughs> lose your teeth. And that's how to play uh, 
old Atari 8-bit cassette games on modern PCs. Hope you found that interesting. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was educational. If you like this, please uh, share the video. Please like. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends. And uh, look forward to other videos like this in the future. And have a really great day, everybody.